Guys, we are here to answer a question, or at least to make some more questions in your mind. What is reality? What the fuck is going on? So, some people are here paying attention, and I'm happy. This is great. Not a lot, considering that there are more people in this place. <laughs> but, here we are. And this is what it is. This is the moment of the present that we all have to either endure or choose to participate in. And I'm here with Dan. He's my bro. <laughs> He's been talking uh, about awareness and attention. Yeah. Happened. Yeah. <laughs> And I think a lot of what reality is has a lot to do with what he just talked about. And there are many ways to look at it. I think we're gonna have a little debate here. Thank you. I got a cigarette. I think there are many ways to look at what is reality. Of course. We can look at it biologically. We can look at it in a physics standpoint, what is this in a physical way? What is happening at the level of our atoms and what is happening at the level of the things inside our atoms, which are even smaller, until the Planck scale. And the Planck scale fucks it all up, guys. We can't, we can't really know anything beyond that. But it's happening within us. It's happening in our bodies. It's happening right now in everything. And we are here for something. And I don't think it is to buy shoes. <laughs> I don't think we're here to buy anything. It's not about buying, it's about access. It's about surviving. It's about expressing. So, Dan, I'll ask you a question. Sure. What are you feeling right now? How is the present moment? What is the manifestation that you are manifesting right now? It feels chill and calm and amazing, as always. We've been through uh, experiences like tonight quite a few times because Ru is uh, famous for attracting very interesting people, and it's always it's always enriching with um, how do you say the positivity, the all acceptance, and uh, always the the atmosphere of the events that, that we're doing is. It's very kind of like filled with love and uh, friendship and you know. So I feel exactly the same way as I do every time I meet you, dude. Every time I hang out. And it actually helps me sometimes when I get it's very much like, you know, distracted with all the stuff happening in, in my life. And then I just go there and woo! <laughs> nice. Do you think that sometimes when when these feelings these emotions that come out without your control, that somehow connecting with people who love you makes a difference? Somehow, yes, because at that moment you kind of remember like what matters in life, right? It's so, it's so easy to get carried away with uh, everyday troubles and everything else. And if you don't step back every now and then and ask, I mean, is it really that important? Or maybe like, you know, enjoying the moment or enjoying even like what you're doing. Are you enjoying what you're doing? Ask yourself this question. Every I am. Time, right? So if you're enjoying what you're doing, I know this guy, like, he has a job. I have a job. And it's, it's not the... It's not the one that he loves. <laughs> that kind of job. So, but when he was uh, trying to prepare this whole thing, 
and I, uh, his girlfriend, Vika, we talked about it like a couple of days ago when I was decorating the dance floor. She said, he's completely in it. He's like so much like, <laughs> brought into it, so that I cannot even get a hold of him. So this is how you, if you're not doing, if you're not living your life this way, if you're not enjoying everything that you do, why do you even do it? I mean, of course, yeah, you only need money. And sometimes there is not, not a perfect job out there, but like, we can get there, eventually. We can get there if we do things properly. For me, it was difficult to get here. It was difficult in a financial way. Like, I had to do a job that I don't like for a long time. I had to gain the courage to do the things necessary to actually just do it, you know. I, I didn't do almost anything. I, everybody else did it. You know, everybody else around me wanted to do this. And that's the beautiful thing about our present moment, about the thing that is the right now. The thing is that we are here in this moment, sharing this moment, all of us here in this room. Because even the things we're feeling and hearing outside, they are happening only in our minds. But even my voice is only in your minds. Even the experience of having a floor on your ass or a chair on your ass, the, the, the voice of the friend next to you talking or the drink in your mouth, all the feelings you're experiencing right now are part of what is right now. And all of us have different perspectives of it. But right now is all that exists. And here is where it matters because we are focused on it. We are here and we can make choices. Or not, we have to actually define what is our choice or what is the choice of our ego that learned things that you know maybe didn't have to learn or turned into trauma, turned into some kind of anxiety, and any kind of uh, mental issue that any of us has, which, which everyone has. Everybody, every one of us has issues, bro. And I think that the issues are not in reality. They are in our ego. They are in the person that we think we are. And that gives us a little freedom. There's a little piece of, of moment, of the present, that you can actually grasp and say, hey, fuck, this is mine. This is my moment. <laughs> and this is, I think, what we're doing here. We're being very free, open, and loving. But I think there's many things we can talk about reality. Like, some, I think the most the, the most general conception about what is reality is that we are a human being that has a brain and that the brain is somehow connected to all your members and organs and that you ex experience life through the brain. And the brain kind of creates this hallucination or this kind of uh, reality that we think is very physical, you know, it feels like it's a sofa, but I know that this is only in my mind. The same thing that is in my brain is the same thing that is in the sofa. So, how can my brain be the thing that creates the hallucination that makes me perceive something that I know is false? That's the big question for me. What is consciousness? What is, what is this awareness that we have? Is it coming from the brain? Or is it not? Or is the soul an idea you have of yourself that somehow lives somewhere else? But if soul is reality, 
and we are somehow experiencing reality as a body, then what you're calling a soul is, is not in, in reality then. So it's something else that is not... I know, bro, I know, I know, I know, I know discussion. <laughs> <laughs> the soul as we define it sounds like something that is out of this moment it is not here it is somewhere else in another dimension in which you think maybe you belong to you, you want to come here? come here and, 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 and replace me you, you can have a, a nice no really I'm serious I'm serious it's a very nice debate uh, no, no. He's, he's just why not? I want to sp explain non-duality. Explain non-duality. I, I, I agree with you, for, for if, if that matters. It's, I agree with her too. It, yeah, it's, a, it's a matter of, of the terminology, right? What we, what we call soul, everything else. So when you were coming back from your psychedelic experience, one way, or one day or another day or another day, um, you what was coming back? What was becoming real? What was what was this deciding? Okay, now I'm coming back and, and become real again. You were there, bro. You what were there. It? What was it? It was like for me. So I'm gonna tell you guys about a, a high dose mushroom experience I had, in which he was present and he was helping me. And. At a certain point, I dissolved into everything that is, into a kind of a wormhole of nothingness. Um, our, my experience became everything. It became the whole universe. I, 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 I dissolved into reality. And when that happened, I became nothing. There is nothing there. It's almost like if you are sleeping and you don't dream and you don't exist. You just simply boop, somehow you show, you, you, you disappear and then you wake up. And you're like, oh shit, I have brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers and the money to pay and the rent and this shit is like, okay, this is weird. Um, and in that moment, when, when I was into the nothingness, there was this voice in my head that said like this, hey bro, are you okay? And I said, oh, yeah, bro, I'm great, thank you. Uh, and, and it was his voice, but his voice came through me in, in the sense that like it, it, it became a part of me and it was a voice of counsel, of, of comfort that helped me through it. And then I started to hear someone crying, and this cry became me. It was like my sadness. And that was a friend of mine that was crying, thinking, what the fuck is happening? Did I just disappear and come back? And I said, yes, you just disappeared and you're the thing. And this is what is going on now. It's the same thing. Language was something that came out of nothing as well. It was something just to communicate, be able to give ideas through somehow uh, sound. Uh, but music, music was like a layer of consciousness in which you feel comfortable in it. Like it was a comfort layer. That was very important. Music is somehow important in this thing. You feel things through it. You, you go through another you connect to something that makes your body move on its own sometimes, which is what's happening over there when, where people are dancing. Um, the non-duality issue is exactly this, is that we think that our body is sensing something that is external, but it's not. The hallucination is this, is that we are not sensing something external. We are everything of right now. And we have this somehow ability to see, hear, taste, touch, and have perceptions of what is happening. But these perceptions are false. 
they are something that is hallucination that we all experience right now and it's weird and I think and the reason why this is happening is that we are here guys all of us right now in this room I mean we are all the same thing here you're listening to my voice but my voice is not is not Raul's voice it's somehow consciousness flowing through me trust me I get so nervous speaking in public that today I am amazed that I am not. It feels like I'm in my living room. You're sober. Uh, no, I'm not sober, bro. <laughs> <laughs> not sober. No, no. So, sober. I like. I think. I think all drugs have some kind of effect on consciousness, and we can tap into different tools of consciousness and every drug has a different tool is a different tool and we can actually you know if we think of cocaine as something that is negative but I don't think it's negative why should it be I think it's something that you know if you want to do it because you want to you know read a book or write a movie or do something important for this moment fuck, do it then there's other drugs that are amazing that you know like uh, weed shit weed helps so many people and it's illegal in many places in the world so expanding consciousness has a lot to do with the way and the ability we have to change it and this change of consciousness is the proof of this illusion we are experiencing but this illusion is beautiful because it's made of love and only because of love this happens because we chose it somehow before we even are aware of awareness yeah but you can speak something now Non-duality, non-duality. <laughs> I'm offering Raul to slowly transition towards uh, to talk about why <laughs> the jungle body and what it's all about. Tell the story. And then we can listen to the others. It's a long story, guys. I'm just saying. But I can say it in like five minutes. <laughs> Don't believe it. I can do it. Uh, so, manifestation, um, making things happen in this present moment, things that you think of, things that sometimes you just feel and then they happen, or sometimes you have a thought and then that shit happens, or you think of someone and then they call you, or if you think of someone and then you see them, it's crazy, it's crazy shit. Uh, I think that this manifestation, uh, people call it the fifth dimension, people call it the secret. Um, it's, it's really something that is right now. It, you don't have anything else except right now. And right now has no past, no future, and no ego. And we are here all in this room without an ego. You believe you have an ego because you believe you are yourself. But what we are manifesting has nothing to do with the ego, has to do with reality, with existence. And if we have an intention, the intention is so important. It's so important in everything we do. But one day I was completely unaware of everything. I didn't know about psychedelics. I didn't know about consciousness. I was completely uh, physicalist, I thought that we were a body with uh, neurons and these neurons have some synapses and these things somehow made this. And these synapses turned out to be uh, impossible to decipher, like nobody knows. You look at the brain and these synapses don't look like uh, red and it doesn't look like chocolate and it, you cannot really feel and see what is happening in the brain when you eat a little chocolate and you see a red heart. So 
consciousness is complicated. But that day I went out with some friends and and there were some people passing in the road and, and I stopped them. I stopped them and I say, hey, how much does a polar bear weigh? Does anybody know? It's enough to break the ice, guys, okay? So I thought it was funny. And as I said this to these two Italians, girls, uh, they were like, you're such an idiot, ha ha ha, why did you stop us? Because I wanted to talk to somebody. And this person became a friend and someone so important that actually, if that didn't happen, I would not have found my job in Italy, where I lived for six years, in a, in a European institution where I met so many international people and I grew so much, especially in talking to people, you know, it's like, you, you, you get, I got used to it, to talk to people from other countries, there. Uh, I learned Italian, everything that happened was because of that moment. And then I started to notice, there are so many of these moments. And the jungle party, it started because three years ago, I took psychedelics for the first time, I died. I understood that I am everything and I am here and somehow this shit is happening. <laughs> and I am free to choose what I believe should be happening. And I've been thinking about doing an event like this for years, guys, years. And I've been talking to people, friends of mine about um, doing it uh, and one day I managed to talk to some friends that said hey I want to do it with you let's do it okay okay so what are you gonna do what do you want to what do you want to do about it I'll do this someone said I'll do that everybody just started to take on their roles of this event and everything happened because of them. Because of them and because of the choice. Choice of doing it. I think that the manifestation is important because we can actually change it. We can actually, we can actually make a test right now, right? Uh, Roland? No, it's not Roland, it's, it's you. What's it? It's not Roland? Norman. Norman, sorry. Jesus. I think now we can do a test. Nor Norman? Norman has this skill that has a, an influence on the world. And it is a meditative skill. We can do it now, all together, and kind of meditate for something to happen and then we'll synchronicitize this shit. I think that the world, as we think of now, which looks like a capitalist uh, enterprise with slaves and people dying of hunger and wars and all this that are happening right now, but not right now here. It's happening always only because we see it on TV and we know that it's happening somehow in our subconscious. There's a story about it. And I think this story is, is difficult for so many of us that I think we exist, we all exist. And if we try to make a little meditation with Norman and get the resource-based economy one step higher, I think it's worth it. Should we try it? Raise your hands if yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, another question, where is Norman? Norman came here, no? Where is he? <laughs> no. Ah, here there he is. Oh, here.